My name is Carmen Savelli. I'm a technical officer in the Department of Food Safety and Zoonosis. Um, and that department has the mission of lowering the global burden of foodborne disease. So I've been there for the last seven years, working as part of the Secretariat of the International Food Safety Authorities Network. And um, my background is in biomedical science and public health epidemiology. Uh, I had my training in Canada, and that's where I was working before uh, coming to Geneva. Um, I was working at the Public Health Agency of Canada, dealing mainly with the response to foodborne disease outbreaks. So InfoSan is the International Food Safety Authorities Network, and it's a network that's managed jointly by uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, FAO, as well as WHO. Um, and it was launched in 2004, and it's a global network that really aims to foster a global community of practice of food safety um, officials from around the world. And um, the network has four main aims. The first one is to promote the rapid exchange of information during a food safety event. So that might mean when there's a foodborne disease outbreak um, involving a food that's crossed borders, so produced in one country, contaminated and exported to another country. Or it might involve an event where you have um, a contaminated food that's been identified in the absence of illness. So in either of those cases, the network functions to promote this exchange of information between members of the network so that they can implement risk management measures to remove uh, the contaminated food from the market. Um, the second aim of InfoSan is to share information about food safety that could be of potential global interest. Um, so examples of this might be the, um, the release of a report that's of particular interest uh, on food safety like uh, the recent global estimates of foodborne disease burden or um, a scientific finding that, that identifies antimicrobial resistance uh, in a foodborne bacteria. So those kinds of new developments that could be of potential interest, uh, we exchange uh, through the network. The third aim is about promoting partnerships between countries and other networks because uh, InfoSan is a global food safety network, but there's also a lot of um, regional networks that operate in different parts of the world. So we collaborate closely with our European colleagues um, specifically with um, the Rapid Alert System for Food and Feed, uh, as well as the Emerging Risks Exchange Network. Uh, those are both European networks. Um, but beyond that, we work closely with um, our colleagues at the APEC Food Safety Cooperation Forum and um, other colleagues at the African Union to move forward on their food safety agenda. So um, we also encourage our members to coordinate with each other directly by sharing experiences and best practices and lessons learned um, and recently we've kind of um, encouraged that by um, promoting a technical webinar series that the InfoSan members in Canada delivered um, which was an eight-part series that was participated in by uh, InfoSan members in more than 60 countries around the world um, and the fourth aim of InfoSan is really to help countries build their capacity to manage um, food safety emergencies. So we do this by uh, organizing training workshops um, and developing exercises, uh, online simulations, as well as developing technical guidance. So um, for example, we've developed guidance for countries on um, improving national food recall systems, uh, as well as applying risk analysis principles um, during food safety emergencies. So those are the four main aims of InfoSAM. And together now we have um, more than 500 members around the world and we have uh, 188 member states participating in the network. So because food safety is seldom dealt with by any single agency in a country, we encourage uh, the designation of one emergency contact point in the agency responsible for coordination during a food safety emergency. But in addition, we encourage the designation of other focal points from all the different agencies, sectors involved in some aspect of national food safety along the farm to fork continuum. Um, and in that way, um, it really does encourage this multi-sectoral and multidisciplinary membership that brings together all the relevant agencies 
that are working on food safety at the national level. So because of this, our membership is quite broad and it includes members from ministries of health, but also agriculture, trade, um, and many others. And actually a few years ago, um, we worked closely with our partners at the World Organization for Animal Health, the OAE, and um, we engaged with them to um, get their focal points for food safety working in veterinary services to join InfoSan. So in that way, we really have representative membership from all the different sectors um, involved in food safety at the national level. So um, it's different in every country depending on their national setup. Um, and those members um, can communicate with each other using our online portal, which we call the InfoSan community website. So they can contact one another and they can also be in touch with all the other members uh, located around the world. I think one of the most important things that we've seen uh, in recent years is that countries have been using InfoSan as kind of a framework at the national level to bring together different sectors to develop national food safety emergency response plans. I know countries like Thailand, for example, have utilized guidance that was developed by WHO and FAO on developing national food safety emergency response plans, and they brought together all the different InfoSan members in the country that form a kind of multi-agency coordination group. And by just working together on the plan, um, you know, they were really bolstering their preparedness for when an actual food safety emergency um, would happen in the future. Um, and I think, obviously, getting everybody involved from the beginning in the planning process is going to make it easier um, to actually implement the plan if all the different players have been a part of uh, producing it. But in addition to that, uh, we've also seen recently um, some national workshops in countries like Bhutan, uh, Nepal and Bangladesh where they've used InfoSan and all the members that are part of InfoSan um, to come together and talk about food safety issues at a national level and um, kind of as a first step to working together um, realizing that maybe they hadn't been talking to each other as much or understanding um, the roles and responsibilities as they relate to food safety and food safety emergency response. So I think InfoSan has been um, kind of a useful framework to start that conversation in some places. Um, but more than that, um, what I think has been useful uh, in the last couple of years is that we've seen countries um, that report having like a weekly call, for example, with all the different stakeholders at a national level who are dealing with food safety. And so even in the absence of a food safety crisis, they'll still meet regularly and talk about um, the different intelligence that they've gathered um, so that in advance of some emergency happening, they're already familiar with one another and um, can kind of um, anticipate emergencies before they happen in a way. So I think that that working together um, can really help prepare them for the time when the actual emergency comes. An additional way that we help facilitate that sharing of information and coordination at a national level between the different InfoSan members is that um, we encourage them to use the InfoSan community website and specifically the group function on there, which allows members to create um, a small forum with just members from their country, for example, and they're encouraged to share documents and information that would just be relevant to their national situation. InfoSan actually also supports the implementation of the international health regulations um, and by participating in InfoSan it's often used as um, the conduit through which member states are reporting food safety events under the IHR. So in this way we also encourage uh, very close collaboration between the InfoSan emergency contact point and the national IHR focal point um, because then um, if they're coordinating it can eliminate this kind of double burden of reporting and um, parallel lines of communication that might get confused um, during a food safety emergency. Responding to food safety events requires a One Health approach because the identification of the event can actually happen at any stage along the whole food chain. So at the level of production on a farm, for example, all the way up to consumption uh, and after consumption when you have human cases of illness identified. So no matter when 
uh, the event is identified, at what stage, you need to engage everyone else along the whole food chain in different sectors um, to come together to get the whole picture. And without engaging the other sectors, you won't know um, what the source was or what interventions should be put in place, and you won't be able to do that effectively. InfoSan really encourages uh, the designation of all different sectors as part of the network at the national level um, so that it starts building um, this relationship so that when a food safety emergency happens, um, everybody knows their roles and responsibilities. So we have InfoSan members in 188 countries. So if you're not sure who the InfoSan members are in your country, you can always get in touch with us and we can let you know. But if you're working in an agency uh, on issues related to food safety and you think you'd like to join as a focal point, um, please contact the InfoSan Secretariat and we can help facilitate the designation process.